Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool sci-fi grill wallpaper inside of Blender. Now this isn't very hard to do. First thing we're going to go over is how to create the actual displacement texture for this, and this is what we'll be creating. And then we're going to go over creating the actual panel and giving its material and everything, and using the displacement modifier to actually create this effect. So let's jump into Blender and get started. First thing we want to do is delete both the cube and the lamp by pressing X to delete and we're going to switch over to the cycles engine and press 7 and 5 on the numpad to go to top view orthographic mode. Now I can press shift A to add in a circle and over here under the settings which says vertices we want to switch it from 32 to about 6 so that we can get this hexagon shape. And I'm also going to switch the fill type from nothing to n-gon so that we can actually have a face here instead of just the outline of the shape. And now that we have the shape to create the hole in our sci-fi grill, we need to add an array modifier to actually create the texture. And right now this is set to relative offset, so if we were to tap into edit mode and press S to scale it up, the second uh, hexagon shape will increase its distance away from this first one so that the distance is relatively the same compared to its size. And that's not what we want. We want to actually switch it to constant offset, so that way, if we were in edit mode and we scaled this sphere or this hexagon up or down, it would remain the same distance away no matter what size it is. So I'm going to tab back out of edit mode and I'm going to change this x value to about 2.1. And now I'm going to copy this array modifier to duplicate it. I'm going to set this x value to 0. And I'm actually going to tab into edit mode and press Shift D to duplicate this hexagon. I'm going to move it right about there and I'm just going to zoom in here and press G and X to move it only along the X axis and I want to center it right between these two vertices right about there. And now I'm just going to drag it down on the Y axis so that we can create a sort of equilateral triangle shape uh, if we were to connect these three vertices right there. So that's looking pretty good so I can tab back out of edit mode and I'm just going to decrease this Y value here until this vertex creates the same uh, triangle shape that it does over here. So I think negative 3.55 should work. Whoops. Negative 3.55. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now I can increase this count to about 100. I'm going to increase this count to about 40. Let's tab in again and select everything and I'm going to switch it the pivot point from median point to individual origins and we can press S to scale up these hexagons so that we can increase the space between each of these hexagons. So the more space there is the more metal there will actually be on our sci-fi panel. So I'm just going to press S to scale it in and type in maybe point, uh, 0.9 and press enter and I'll tab out of edit mode and with our uh, texture selected, our texture object, I'll press Alt-C to bring up this menu here. And we're just going to click Convert to Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. And this is basically just a faster way of applying all the modifiers. And so now if we were to press Control shift alt c we can set the origin to the center of our geometry. And by pressing Alt-G, it'll just center everything in our scene so it's easier to work with. And one more thing I'm going to do to this object, I'm just going to press S to scale it and type in 0.5 so that it's a little bit smaller. And now I'll select our camera here and press Alt-G and Alt-R to center it in our scene and clear its rotation. And over here in the object tab, I'm going to change the Z value to about 10. And I'll press the 0 on the numpad to go to our camera view. And right now you can see that our entire texture does not fit inside of our camera view. So under the camera settings here, I'm going to switch it from perspective to orthographic, and I'm going to change this orthographic scale to roughly 100, so that majority of our uh, texture will fit inside of our camera view. So now if we were to go to render view by pressing shift Z, we really can't see anything. It's all gray, and that's not what we want. We actually want our hexagon shapes to have a black color. So let's go to material tabs here, give it a new material. I'm going to set it to a mission and change the color to a pure black. We want our background to be a pure white color, like that. 
So now if we go to rendered view, we can sort of see what we're getting. And wherever there's a white value, that's going to be a displacement on our plane to create the actual metal. And wherever we have black, that's going to be transparent so that it's a hole inside of our plane. So now, if we were to render this out with just one sample, and we take a look at this, you can see that there's a really sharp contrast from white to black. And so this means when we add in our displacement modifier, it's going to go from a height of 1 to a height of 0 with a sharp fall off, which is not what we want. We actually want it to be more of a gradual uh, transition. So I'm actually going to increase the samples to about 100. And I'm going to increase this resolution to 100%. And I'm going to re-render this. I'll pause the recording right now and come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering, and if we zoom in now, you can see that there's a more gradual transition from this white value to this black value, which is exactly what we want. So now I can press F3 to save this, and I'm just going to save it as grill underscore displacement, just like that. And now we can add in a new scene here. I'm going to make sure we're still in the Cycles engine, and I'm going to press 7 and 5 so that we're at top view orthographic mode. And now I'm going to press Shift A to add in an image as plane. We're going to select that image that we just saved to our computer. And the reason we add in this plane as an image as plane instead of just a regular plane is because it'll have our texture properly UV unwrapped onto it so that we don't have to worry about doing that and messing up the proportions of the plane with the texture. Otherwise, it's more likely that we would get artifacts and some stretching or banding. So this is just one way to help make sure that we avoid those artifacts. So after adding it in, I'm going to press S to scale it up. I'm going to press 5 and enter. And I'm going to tab into edit mode and press Control R so we can add some vertical loop cuts. And with the middle mouse button, I'm just going to scroll up so we get four cuts like that. And then just left click and then right click to apply that action. And let's add in some loop cuts horizontally. I'm going to add in about two and left click and then right click to apply that. And then I'm just going to press A twice so that we select everything. Press W to subdivide and I'm going to increase the number of cuts to about five. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can create a lot of geometry so that our displacement on this plane will be much more detailed. If there's not any displacement or any geometry, it's going to be a really low res displacement and it won't look good at all. So now we can tab out of edit mode and I'm going to add in our subsurf modifier here. And then I'm going to add in a displacement modifier and I'll add in another subsurf modifier. And for our displacement texture, we're just going to click new here. And if we click this button here, it'll take us to the texture tab with our texture already open so that we can edit it. And we want to make sure it's set to image or movie. And we're just going to select our grill displacement that we made earlier. And now we can go back to the modifier tab here. And if we take a look at this in solid view, you can see it's looking really crazy because the strength is way too strong. So I'm going to decrease that to about 0 0.01. That's looking a lot better. And let's change the shading to smooth. And right now, if we were to increase our subsurf count right now, you can see that we're getting more detail but you'll also notice that there's some stretching and it's not really looking the way we want it to and that's because our texture coordinates are set to local so we want to switch that to UV and you'll see that it's starting to look a lot better if we increase this subdivision count to a higher value so at roughly four subdivisions this is looking perfect but you can see that my viewport is starting to lag a lot so I'm just going to hide this from our uh, view and just make sure the render settings are kept on. I'm going to set the view and the render to 4 and for the second subsurf modifier I'm going to set both of them to about 3. And now it's time for us to create our material. We already have a basic material set up so let's just open up our node editor over here and let's press N to get rid of that tab and T to get rid of this one here and I'm just going to move this diffuse shader up here and unplug this texture and so let's press Control shift and left click so it's plugged into our output here and if we press shift z right now everything is black because there's no light in our scene so let's create a quick light right now press shift a to add in a plane and then press s to scale it up and type in 10 and then press enter now what i'm going to do is press r x 
and 90 so that we rotate it along the x-axis by 90 degrees and then I'll press enter and you can see that we rotate it just like that and then from top view I'm going to rotate it by another 90 degrees and then from front view I'll rotate it by roughly about 45 degrees and from top view we can rotate it like that and we're going to position it right about here so that it's not intersecting our plane and it's casting light in that sort of angle. And I think that's good. So now we can give it a new material and set it to emission. Let's make sure it's set to pure white color. And let's give it a strength of about 2.5 maybe. If we press Shift D to go to rendered view, you can see that our light is in the way of our plane and we can't see our plane. So if we go to the object settings over here and scroll down to cycle settings, under where it says ray visibility, we can uncheck camera and it'll actually hide our plane but it'll still show the emitted light that it's producing. So now I'm just going to select our sci-fi grill right here and I'm going to decrease this white color to something like a dark gray. Maybe set the value to about 0.3 like that. Now I'm going to add in a glossy shader. I'll duplicate this mix shader here. Just plug both of them in like that. And I'm also going to add in a Fresnel node and use that as our factor over here. And for our glossiness, I'm going to set the roughness down to zero and make sure the color is set to a pure white color. And you can see that we're getting that reflection here, sharp reflection. The higher this roughness is, the softer the reflection will be. But for this metal, I think it's better if it's set to a roughness of zero. And then we'll just take this and plug it into the bottom socket of this mix shader here. And we want to make sure that the image output is plugged into our factor. So right now, wherever there's white from our texture, it's going to be showing this metal material. And wherever it's black, it's going to have this transparent material. So if you take a look at that, it's looking pretty good. And if we were to render this out, we would see the full displacement, how it looks like. So first I just need to set up the camera view. So let's add that in. Press Alt-G and Alt-R so it's centered at our, the middle of our scene. I'll press the zero on the numpad to go to camera view and G and the middle mouse button and then just drag it back so that majority of this plane fits inside of our camera view. So I'm going to drag it back some more. Let's press Shift-Z to see how that looks. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to come over to the render settings here. I'll set the samples to about 100. I'm going to render this out right now. I'm going to pause the re uh, recording and I'll come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering. So let's take a look at this. You can see it looks pretty nice. Right now it's not really that high quality because our resolution was set to 50%. And But other than that, yeah, it looks pretty good. If you wanted, we could... Uh, increase the light some more to maybe a strength of like five and see how that looks. Let's see, that might be a little too strong, so I might set that to roughly a strength of three. And maybe I want to rotate this, change the rotation some more. Let's switch this to local access, and I want to press R and X to rotate it along the X axis. But I want to rotate along the local x-axis, so I'm actually going to press x twice and just rotate it up some more like that. And I think that should look somewhat better. Okay. And I'm actually going to increase this uh, resolution to 100%. And I'm going to check denoising. And now I'm just going to render it out one more time. I'll pause the recording again and come back when it's done rendering. Alright, so there you have it. A cool sci-fi grill panel or wallpaper and you can use this for many different things you could even use it as like a car grill for the front of a car if you wanted you could uh, if you wanted to use this in like a sci-fi scene for the grill on the ground since this is a really dense piece of geometry what I would do is I would recommend that you bake this out as a normal map and then use that in your scene instead but on its own, I say this is a pretty good wallpaper which you could use for either your desktop or your phone or anything else you could think of. So yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.